What's up everybody? Welcome back to another video. In this video, we're gonna be screen printing some shirts and some hoodies. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you through the process of what I do whenever I get ready to screen print my shirts. Remember, everything that I'm doing is the way I do it. Everybody has their own different ways of doing it. Like I said, this is my way. All right, so what's the first thing you need when it comes to screen printing shirts? is you need the artwork right you can't do nothing without the artwork so for this particular order right here everything was hand drawn as we can see right here so this is going to be the image that goes on the back it's got like a wolf standing on top of a helicopter with the smoke from the helicopter going in the air so that's that's going to go on the back and then underneath that is a circuit card with everybody's name in it and then the front piece is going to be a bomb that looks like this right here. It's a bomb with a wolf in the inside. So that is what we're working with for this image right here. What I'm not gonna do is I'm not gonna take you through the artwork because that will take forever to show you how to vectorize all this stuff right here. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna show you what we came up with and what we changed on the image that wasn't the same. So we're gonna get into that right now. All right, so here we are. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna jump into the computer and we're gonna check this out so I can show you what the image looked like after it was complete and then I'm gonna show you how it looks now that we have it separated. So let's go ahead, jump into this screen. All right, so as you guys remember, here's this picture right here. Here's how the picture looked whenever we, uh, we first got it from them. Um, I didn't know what was going on down here with all this. So we did our best with this piece right here. And as you can see, that's how it came out right there. So we did our best with it. I didn't personally, personally, I didn't like the way it came out. So what I did was I gave them a different option and I'm gonna show you on what that looks like in a second so that was the first piece right there and then if we come over here we can see this was the actual bomb right here this is what the bomb looked like um, these flames are backwards though these flames um, the ordinance flame goes the other way so um, I re had to redo this but I just wanted to show you how it looked the first time that we did it right there alright so the next one that we did was this circuit card right here here is the circuit card and with, with all this right here we didn't have to do any of the names in here so whenever you see this next image which is right there you're gonna see that none of the names in there are vectorized or none of the names were added because all you gotta do is just go in there and add the names um, unless it's like a special character font like we did on the last one where they made it look like it was scratched in there that's when it's, you have to like vectorize it but this there was no special font they just wrote names and all we had to do with this one was just go back in there and write names or type out names with a computerized font since it went with the circuit card. All right, and then if you look right here, here's the last one right here that we did with the circuit card. We added the names in there and we did it with some old school computer font right there. All right, so with that being said, whenever it came to vectorizing that helicopter, I uh, remember this was the original image right here. And this, this image right here, they wanted it to be sitting on top of this circuit card like this with all the names inside of it um, we couldn't get a really good fix for that because we would have to shrink that circuit card down very small so that we can get it fit on the back of the shirt so what i went ahead and did it um is i i came up with this image right here um, they wanted it black and white so we just went with black and white instead of the different colors inside of it so we we're able to still capture everything that they wanted in there um, but instead of that helicopter we went ahead and went with the white circuit card with the names in it and I think it looks a whole lot better than it would have looked um, if we would have added the helicopter in there and then the circuit card underneath that. All right, so I just wanted to run that by you guys real quick. So this is going to go on black shirts and hoodies. We're doing um, white and then we're going to touch it with black and then the smoke is going to be in a gray color. So that's what the image is going to look like. So whenever we turn it into a vector, this is what it now looks like. So here we are right here, Corel Draw. I'm using the plugin called Simple Steps Advanced Tools. Um, basically what you do is you come in here, I'm not going to go through the whole process, you come in here, um, you create your palettes, and what it does is it separates all your inks and then you come up here and then you can separate everything um, into individual colors. You could generate an underbase, you could, you could choke it, you could do whatever you want. That's some of the, the basic stuff, I, I don't know a lot of this stuff when it comes to, to messing with this program. I just know the basics right now. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna show you. Here is our bomb right here. And then if you look here, we have the underbase. And then right next to the underbase, we have the black outline. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go with these two right here. All right, so once I got this, I save it as an Adobe Illustrator file because for some reason when I go to print this on my printer, it won't print. So I save it as an Illustrator file and then I just open it up in Illustrator. So let me show you that. 
All right, so here we are right here in Adobe Illustrator, right? So, all right, so with this right here, um, I added my own registration marks. This is gonna be the, the chest piece that goes right here. So there it is again, the white underbase with the black over it, right? So that's the two color that we're gonna be using there. And then if we look over here, we're going to see our back piece, right? I've already, I've already separated the colors here. I've already um, added my registration marks. I made sure everything was centered. Make sure the whole image is gonna match up whenever we put it together. So if we look right here, we have the white underbase. The next one that we have right here is going to be the gray smoke. Um, this is gonna be the white if I wasn't using the underbase. And then we have the black outline right here. So um, with this being said, um, with this white right here, I would have to fit this in there perfect. But being that I'm doing a white underbase right here, um, I'm probably not gonna use this white one, but we'll see whenever it comes time um, to getting ready to print this out. What I'm gonna do, if I'm gonna use the white underbase, or I'm gonna use the white and just print the black and fill it in. All right, so and that's it. That's gonna be the image that they're, we're gonna be printing on this shirt. Um, I think it's pretty cool. I think it came out good going from a hand-drawn image just like this here to something that was vectorized and we're gonna be able to put it on a shirt and we're gonna be able to see how it looks. All right, so what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be using the Canon Pixima IX6820. The link for this will be down below in the description. Um, since I've started using this, I haven't had any problems when it came to washing out my screens. So I highly recommend it. You guys could check it out. Like I said, the link is down below. Also, a lot of people that are just starting out have contacted me asking if I would print film for them. Um, I don't print film for people because it's just going to cost too much to not print it, but then to send it to somebody. And then you take the chance of it messing up whenever it gets shipped. All right, so what I would recommend is getting a flash drive, something like this, so you could upload your file to this and then take it to like Staples or Office Max, I think that's what it's called, and you can have them print it off for you. And it's a whole lot cheaper and you get it right away. So that would be an alternative way to doing it if you don't have a printer. All right, so the ink that we're gonna be using for this right here is this right here. Um, I don't use any of the CMY whenever it comes time to doing this right here but I do use the black because I only use this for um, printing out films um, I think you could buy this for less than 25 bucks I'll put the link down below if you guys are interested in so I think for 25 bucks this is good because if you're using this to print film you're gonna use your black right so if you look right here you get 12 of the large and then four of the small All right, and then when I open this up you guys can see we have we still have the four little black ones and then the big black ones they come just like this. All you do is pop this off and stick it in. But I still have 11 of them. I've only used one of them since I started using this. So um, it's it's. I think it's worth its money, worth 25 bucks. Save you some time. You can print them um, at your own convenience, and you don't have to drive to your nearest store to get them printed. So check the link out for both of these things down below. All right, and as you guys can see right here, I just brought up here the, the transparent film that I use. Um, this right here, I'll put the link down below also so you guys can order it. All right, so the last time that I ordered, I got really lucky. Um, this right here is the 13 by 19 um, film. And as we can see, this one says, doesn't say the 13, but it says by 19. There's 100 sheets in here. Um, I ordered the, the 13 by 19 for the back piece, and then I wanted to order the 8.5 by 11 so that I could do the chest pieces, and I wouldn't have to use a whole piece of transparent film. All right, and then if we look at this bottom one down here, um, whenever I ordered this right here, I ordered, like I said, I ordered this right here to do chess pieces. And then when I was looking at the package, I said, man, it's as big as the other one. Um, but whenever I looked at the label that was on here, it actually says 8.5 by 11. So I don't know if they just mislabeled this, but I got two, two uh, hundred packs um, of the 13 by 19 inch paper. So I'm not going to complain about it. I'm, all right, so if you're doing this for the first time, um, you guys got to know there's a slick side and there is a tacky side all right so whenever it comes time to putting this in here the tacky side will come facing out to you because it feeds in and it's going to print right on top of this right so that's one way you could do it but if you still can't figure it out all you have to do is get your finger wet and then just touch the edge of it and you'll be able to see whatever side does that right there is the side you want to print on right so just put a little bit of water lick your finger whatever you want to do whatever side turns white like that right there 
is the side that you want to print on. So let's go ahead and start printing these films. Alright, so while I was printing, I told us that we ran out of the black ink finally, so we're going to replace this one right here. So we're just going to wait for this thing to come out. I'll show you how easy it is to do it. Just pull it out of the package, pop this off. So here's the black that we're going to replace. Just pull it out, grab the new one, pull that piece off, drop it in, and you're ready to go. So as you can see, this one, these orig the original ones come black, the new ones. Um, they come with this clear, here's the original one right here, how it has that black over it. Um, the new ones, they're clear like that, so we should be ready to go again. So let's continue printing. So here we are right here. Here is the underbase. Really black. So this is what that printer could do for you if you're looking to get into screen printing. Um, as you can see, it's really black. Works really good. So here's the underbase right here. All right, and the next one we're going to add in here is going to be the gray spoke. So we line up our registration marks. Everything should line up perfectly. And then if we come with this last one. We line this piece up right here. So everything's lining up good. And we're ready to go down, put some emulsion on the screens, and then after we do that, we can start burning these. And then wash them out, see how everything looks whenever we get ready to screen print them. Alright, so I don't have a shop. I work out of my garage. I got a two-car garage. Um, that side back, from behind the camera that way, is like storage. I got a trailer over there with some stuff on it. And then from... The back from where the camera's at this way is where I use all this side for screen printing. I got my whole setup over here. So what I'm going to do, if you're new to my channel and you haven't seen it before, I'm going to show you what I got. So if we look right here on the bottom, that's my pressure washer. This is where I keep my screens. I don't have many of them. And then whenever it comes time to burning my screens, I have this table right here. And then if you look right here on the top, this is where I actually burn my screens right there. Um, I just used that light, that halogen light right there with a PVC setup. Um, it works perfect for me. The only thing is it takes about four to five minutes whenever it comes time to burn in the screen. But with that light, I've never had any problems with it. Every time I've gone and washed out screens, they've always washed out pretty good. All right, so if we look right here, this is just a, was like a TV stand. We we're getting rid of it, so I went ahead and I kept it. Um, I just had my inks. I would move them from one spot to another all the time. So with this right here, I was able to keep this and store my inks. If you can see right here, I got my squeegees. I got some inks right here, right here. And then on the top, I got some PMI tape. I got the palette tape up there. And then I have some emulsion remover and some ink cleaner up there. All right. And if we look right here, these are the inks that I'm going to be using. Um, I get all my inks from Total Ink Solutions. That's just where I go to. Um, everybody has their preference where they want to get their ink from. For now, this is what I'm doing, and I have no problem with it. So, if we look here, I have some quartz right here, and then if we look a little bit below that, we got some pints down there also. All right, so if we look right here, this is my flash dryer. It's nothing fancy. It's one that I got off of eBay. You guys can find the link to this in the description. Um, it actually works perfect for me. I don't use it to dry the inks. I just use it to dry the top layer of the ink, and then I use my heat press to fully cure the ink. So this, this helps out a lot. I don't have to go and use this heat gun right here to do that. I could just plug this in, let it get up to temperature, and roll it back and forth whenever I'm drying the top layer of my ink. All right, so then here we are right here. Here's the Riley Hopkins that we're going to be using. This is the four-color, one-station press. It's an upgrade from the last one that I just had. Um, it's a whole lot better, and I, I really enjoy using this one. I haven't done a video on it in a while, so we're going to do one right now. All right, and then if I come down a little bit, you're going to see... This is the table or the bench, whatever you want to call it, that I made to put this on right here. So inside of this little box right here, I can actually store some screens inside of there. There is some rails in there where the screens will slide in there just perfect. Right, so for this image, what I'm going to be using is three 110s and two 155s. The 110s are going to be for the back. The 155s are going to be for the front. Right, so what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to show you how I put emulsion, burn them, and then wash them out. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to speed through this and you guys can watch it from there. If you guys want to know exactly how I did it, a little teaser will pop up up here. 
And from there, you could go see that video where I did a full on tutorial on how I do all that stuff with these right here. So let's get started. How you make a sale to the ice cream man? All right, so if you guys are wondering what that little scene was all about with the ice cream truck, moral of the story is my daughters wanted ice cream. They went out there. I went out there with them because you never know. I went out there. The truck had some logos on it, but when I started talking to the guy, the guy had nothing on. He just had a plain old red shirt on. Didn't say what he did wasn't promoting his business if he got off the truck and went into a convenience store or something, right? So I told him, hey man, I can make you some shirts if you need some shirts. So, so then he asked me for a business card, that's why he saw me run back, and then run back out there because he wanted a business card. So it's a 50-50 chance either he's gonna call me and tell me, yeah, he needs shirts, or he's just gonna say, yeah, whatever, I don't need any. But I gave him my card, you know what I mean? And that's what it's all about. You wanna get your name out there, you have to be able to go out there and talk to people that you don't even know, you know what I mean? And you have to be able to accept the word no, you know what I mean? I gave him my card, maybe he calls, maybe he doesn't, right? So I'm gonna take you through the process real quick. We'll do one of them and then I'll speed through the rest and then when it comes time to do the chest, I'll slow down. I will do the micro registrations on that. I didn't do the micro registrations on the back. I've already done it. So whenever you see this, you're gonna see that there's already ink on the screens. The screens have already been lined up. I've already done my test prints and we're good to go. So let's go ahead and start printing them. Right, we're gonna slide this on here. Then we're gonna line it up. All right, so if you're new to screen printing and you've never done it before or you're watching this video because you're interested in doing it, um, with this PMI tape, the good thing about it is uh, once you get your shirt in place, right, all you have to do is smash it down or smooth it out. And what it's going to do is it's going to hold your shirt in place whenever you get ready to screen print, right? So this, this piece, this, all of this might move, all of this, but everything that is on this palette right here is not going to move. All right, so like I said, if you're new to screen printing and you haven't done this before, if you've done it, then you already know. But if you're new, the reason that you have to like stick this shirt to the palette is because whenever it comes time to printing these different colors, what we're gonna do is we're gonna print this color right here. And then once we're done, we're gonna move this color out the way and then we're gonna come with this color right here. When we're done with that color, we're gonna bring the next color and so on. So if this, 
if you were to print one color and then pick it up and start on the next color and this shirt would move, you're not going to get your image to line up. So with that double sided tape right there, it holds your shirt in place and you don't have to worry about it moving. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to screen print our white ink. The white ink that we're using is this bright white from Total Ink Solutions. There's the serial number or the lot number or whatever it is right there if you guys are interested in getting this from Total Ink Solutions. All right, so we're going to go ahead. We're going to bring this down. All right, so if you're doing this for the first time, if you're a screen printer and you already know, then you already know. But for those of you that are just starting, whenever you do this, you have to have an off contact. And what that means is your screen cannot be sitting directly on the shirt. So if you could see this, whenever I press this, you're going to see there's a little bounce in between the shirt and the screen right here. So you have to have that so that whenever you push the ink through the screen, the screen will come back up and separate from the ink so that it doesn't get stuck. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to do this. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to lay down the white underbase. And what the white underbase does is it's going to take away that black. So forth. just know that with this white, um, this white is very thick. And I think it's any white that you might use. They sell some reducer to make it, um, I guess, thinner, I guess. But I don't use it. I just go with whatever's in there. Um, as I start using it and the palette under here warms up from using the flash dryer, the ink does get smoother and it does lay down a whole lot easier. So it might be tough whenever we do our first couple coats, but after that, you're going to see that this stuff's just going to smear on there and then we'll be able to push it off right away. So let's go ahead and lay this on there. All right, so this is going to be our first layer right here. If you look, you can still see a lot of the fibers, the, a lot of the black fibers coming through the shirt. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to put this over this for a couple seconds. Um, once, all I'm doing is I just want to get it like a little tacky. I don't want it to be wet. I just want it to be tacky so I can put another layer on top. That's our first layer. We're going to go ahead and we're going to hit, hit it with our second layer now. So if you can see that now, we're getting a little bit of the less black fibers coming through. We're going to go ahead and we're going to hit it with our flash dryer again. A really nice bright white area now so that whenever we go and we lay our gray and our black over this we don't have to worry about putting a whole bunch of coats because we have a white underbase now so we hit it with the flash dryer so we can get it a good dry while I do that I'm gonna spin this next color over here um, now we're gonna go ahead and this smoke that is right here is gonna have a gray to it so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna lay that down so here's our gray right here for the gray this is what we're using right here we are using Russell Gray, there's the number right there if you guys are interested in this, um, from Total Ink Solutions. I don't get nothing from them, so don't think that's why I'm promoting them. That's just the inks that I used. I did get like five inks from them that they want me to try out, so I will eventually do that, but since I'm not doing the inks that they sent me, I'm going to talk a little bit about the inks that I have. They just want an honest opinion about what I think about it. So the white, it's a little bit thick. Um, if you had the reducer, um, you could do what you can with that. But for this gray right here and the black, but for this gray right here, you're going to see um, this stuff is a lot more, I guess we could say milky or I wouldn't say runny. This stuff's not runny because um, I could leave it here overnight and it won't move from that position right there. So we're going to go ahead and as you guys can see, whenever I lay this down, um, it's going to be really smooth. A lot smoother than the white, right? So we're gonna cover up the whole image and then we're just gonna go ahead. Remember, we got the white under base. So with this gray right here, we should only have to do one, um, one pass with it. So there's our pass right there. And as you can see, whenever I did this, I have a, the white background and then I offset it just a little bit so you can see a little bit of that white with the gray 
sticking just outside of it. So that's, I think that's good. We don't need to put many layers of gray. One, it should be just fine. I'm gonna swing our black over here. We're gonna bring it down. And then for this black right here, we are using this opaque black right here. Here's the one that we're using. Here's the lot number if you guys are interested in it. This one right here is, is really good. I like it. As you guys can see, we barely have any ink on this um, on this screen right here. Um, for this right here, you're gonna see whenever I coat this, it, it's, it's like really, really um, smooth. You know what I mean? And basically all I have to do is one pass with this black and it'll be good to go. So um, the opaque black, again, this is from um, Total Ink Solutions. So we're gonna hit it one time just like that, just to coat it. And then we're gonna come back. We're gonna hit it one time and then we're gonna pass over again just to make sure that no ink got left in the screen. So we're good. We go ahead and we pick it up. And then when I zoom in, you guys can see um, everything came out really good. I think this image came out good. So for this last layer, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring the flash dryer over it. And then what I'm gonna show you is after I do this, I'm gonna put it here for a couple seconds. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna release the shirt from the PMI tape. And what that's gonna do is whenever I put the flash dryer over it, heat is gonna be able to get not only on the top, but underneath the shirt and dry both sides at the same time, right? It's still not going to completely dry this image. Like I said, I still have to put it under my heat press, right? So we're gonna go ahead, we're just gonna do that just to separate it from the PMI tape. Make sure you don't have nothing on your fingers because the last thing you wanna do is touch it and ruin it, right? So we're gonna go ahead, as you can see, it's separated. But make sure whenever you put your flash dryer over this, that it doesn't, the flash dryer doesn't touch it because it will burn the shirt. All right, so once you're done with it, you can go ahead and move this out of the way. And then all I'm gonna do is just grab the shirt from right here by, this, by the shoulder. I'm gonna pull it off, all right? And then I bring it over here to this box. And all I'm gonna do is just lay it on here, just like that. Do is bring the flash dryer over. And I'm gonna let it sit right over it, just like that. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna set up the next shirt while this is doing that. All right, so that's it. That's the end of the video. I didn't get to finish the video the way I wanted to. Um, I wanted to do a little bit more to it, but it's all right. Um, I had some other jobs that came up and I had to do those. So I'm actually shooting this part of the video like a month and a half later from when I actually shot that part of the video. So I didn't get to do, I know I was gonna show you how I set up the chest piece. I didn't get to do that. I, was, I think I told you guys I was gonna show you how I bag them and I didn't do that either. So um, we'll save that for another time. But that's it. Um, with this press that I have now, uh, doing the registration is a whole lot easier um, from whenever I had the last press. 
All right, so that's it. We're getting ready to set up for another job. Uh, we are going to be doing some next level shirts again. We're going to be doing some white ones and some gray ones. We're going to be putting this image on right here. It's simple. Nothing overlapping. It's just going to be a hit with the black and a hit with the red, and we should get it out of here. Oh, also, and then in the front, we're going to put a rocking chair in the front. So I just want to say thank you guys for watching another one of my videos, and until next time, keep pressing.